Hi, AT from CNC at Home. In my last video, I did a thing about making a sword, uh, and I didn't really cover what I did in Lightburn. In my mind, it was pretty straightforward, and the more I thought about it, I actually was employing several features within Lightburn. What I wanted to do was kind of go through the process so you could see what it was that I was doing. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up the image that I started with and then kind of talk through the steps and do some stuff in Lightburn. So let me bring that image up for you. This is the image that I found that I really liked. Uh, most of what I'll be doing, I have this rotated 90 degrees, uh, just personal preference. What I ended up doing was this background where it's white. I, in Photoshop, I basically masked around the sword so that I could have just this, and then I could do my edge trace easily on it. The scroll work on the blade, I ended up doing some more masking on this so I could bring it in, do an edge trace on it, and do fill mode. Then the handle, because of its intricacies and the shadows, I did as an image. Let me bring up uh, another image. This is, this is after I did the masking. This is the first step of the masking. Then the ultimate step is this. With this silhouette of the sword, I brought this into Lightburn, and this is what I did my edge trace against. And then it did a really nice edge around here. The other thing that I did was I essentially removed everything except the hilt and the scroll work. This image then I could do as my image, although this part of it I did convert into a vector graphic so that I could do a fill mode on that. This also created an, an opportunity to use a different type of fill mode within Lightburn. I'll show you that. That uh, basically, in, in this case, uh, cut the burning time in half, actually better than in half. So. Let's go ahead and pull these pieces into Lightburn and I'll show you how that works. Here are the two images. Let me go ahead and get these aligned with each other and also rotated. Uh, to rotate it, I just select the image and I press the period and that does a rotate for me. I'll do three periods because this is the direction I want it. The other option, I could come up to my, my rotate options here and I believe that's negative. Yeah, that's a negative 90. I could do it that way too. Then I can just grab this image and I'll drag it over here and it should snap when it's centered up with the other object. And then I can move these two guys around. It's hard to hard to see the the back one, but there are definitely two images there. Let me go ahead and put that other, well, let's do this top one. Let's put this on a different layer. And we can turn these on and off so we can see the two, the two pretty easily. The first thing I want to do is work with this profile or this mask. And this is simply just right clicking. And I wanted to do a trace image. And the default looks like it's doing a really good job. So I'll go ahead and have it delete the image once I'm done, because I won't need that anymore. Click OK. And as you can see, this is doing a fill, and I don't want a fill. I want to do a line, so I get just the perimeter. And let's turn on the other image. Let's get that zoomed in. So you can see it's really starting to take shape. The blue is where I'm going to cut through the material, and the rest of this is where I'm going to print it as an image. Although I want to take this part and convert that to vector. So again, I will just I will select this, right-click on it, and go to trace image. And here we see that it's it's not getting all of this scroll work. So I'm going to up my threshold slowly until I get pretty much everything. Don't want too much, don't want too little. Okay, so everything's selected here, this looks good. Now I've got a bunch of stuff up here I don't need. One thing I can do within Lightburn is I can create essentially a mask, and I'll tell it this is the only part of the image that I want to convert. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. You'll see the rest of this disappears. I don't want to delete the image because I want that image. So this part I'll, I'll put on another layer. We'll click OK. And we'll just hide. Yeah, we'll hide the image. And I'll also, I'll stick this on another layer, this red part. And we can turn, turn this part off and we can zoom in and see what it's doing here. Because I don't think I want all of this. And I also want this to be filled. There's a bunch of stuff here that I don't want. Most of this will be easy to get rid of. Uh, if we just select this whole thing. I want to ungroup it, first of all. Then I can pick these individual pieces and just click delete because I don't want those. This is a big chunk I don't want. So what I'm going to do is essentially I'm just going to take a square and draw it around that. And then I can subtract it. I want to subtract more of it. I want to get rid of this kind of funky part over here as well. So let's draw another rectangle. Uh, but this one I'm going to rotate about like that. We'll move that over. There, that looks good. I want to uh, get rid of that part. So I will, first I'll select what I want to keep. And then I will select what I want to get rid of, and I'll do my subtract. And I got rid of that piece. The rest of this, I want to keep. This is going to be all the, the nice fancy scroll work. Let's turn everything else back on. If I turn off my fancy scroll work, we'll see that it's still there as part of the image. And I don't need that burning twice. So what I want to do is mask that. So I will create a construction layer. Now well, let's see if this works. There we go. I'm going to use my tool layer like so. And then I have to do this in a different order. So I will select my image, select the image. Then I have to do a shift select on my working layer. Then I can go to my tools and I can say apply mask to image. I could cut it as well. I'm just going to use a mask. All we end up seeing and what we'll burn is what's inside of this mask. If we zoom in on this, we'll see that there's more here than I really need or want. What I can do is I can select this and select everything else. There we go. I can select my mask and then I can adjust it. So what I'll do is I'll move it in here really close to the hilt, right about there. These little pieces down here I don't need. That's more work to get rid of than I want to spend. So I'll just leave those. We'll go back out. We'll see the whole thing now. Let's turn on everything because we don't need to see our little masking area. This is our sword. This is what we're going to do. We'll start out by maybe doing the image part. Then we'll do the fill. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll cut out this blue line or the edge. This is too big for my laser working area. We can see this is the laser working area in the grid. So I did a control A to select everything. And I'm going to shrink this down. And I'll move it over here a little bit. Okay, we're still we're still on the big side. So let's shrink this down a bit more. That looks pretty good. Now I'm flirting with the limits, my cutting limits. If I wanted to, I could rotate this whole thing and do something diagonal across my working area and make it quite a bit bigger. That's just going to be too big for what I want to do right now. So we'll leave this. This looks pretty good. Other than it looks like my mask did not move. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. So let's uh, let's back everything up here. Get everything in where it's supposed to be. Here we go. I'm not sure why that didn't get selected. Oh, because I wasn't showing it, maybe. Let's try that. We'll do our control A to grab everything. There we go. We'll shrink this down. Move it. We'll shrink it down just a little bit more. That's what we want to burn. We need to set our burning parameters. So for the image, actually these lines, let's move that down because we want that to be the last thing that burns. We'll start with the image. We'll go to our library. We're doing plywood. And we're etching an image. So we'll assign that to our black layer. And to the red layer, we're doing an etch fill, so we'll assign that. And then for the blue, we're doing three millimeter cut through. We'll assign that. Now, when we look at our preview, this should give us a good idea how long this whole thing will take. This says it's going to take 41 minutes and 32 seconds, which isn't, isn't too bad. The first thing it'll do is it'll cut the, the hilt and the guard, then it'll come back and do our scroll work on the blade. And then the last thing it'll do is cut out the sword. If we look at just the scroll work, we do our preview it says it's going to take 12 minutes and 10 seconds to do if i change the type of fill that it's doing to offset fill and do the preview it's half the time five minutes and 30 seconds what's the difference you say well let's take a look at this if we let me enlarge this. If we play how this is going to burn, watch how it does it. It basically picks an image or an area that's filled in, and it just works in that image without doing a lot of movement. If I turn on my travel, these red lines show where the laser head is moving without burning, and there's a little bit of it in your little spider web kind of thing. Not too bad. And that's our 5 minutes and 30 seconds. If we switch this and do a regular fill, go into preview, look at all of this red. All of this is where the laser is moving and not burning. And that's taking up time for just moving the laser around. Let's do a quick play on this. So you can see it's doing, you know, at the same burn, but it's just moving left and right, left and right, left and right. And there's just a ton of wasted time here moving between all of this stuff. That's why we don't want to use just regular fill on this type of object. We want to use the offset fill. Let's go back and look at that. If we just kind of step through, you see what it's doing is it's sticking with a specific area that needs to be filled in or burned, and it just goes around and does that area. And it greatly reduces laser movement when it's not burning. And that's how we get that efficiency in time on this, literally cutting the amount of time in half. That's all there is to it. That's how I did all the design work within light burn to get the edge where I could get that burned. I can get the image for the handle. It turned out nicely. Then the scroll work here, I converted into vectors so we could increase the speed and essentially darken this up. I wanted this quite a bit darker than, than what the image was showing. The image was showing it fairly light. 
as we see here in the image, it's kind of a, a golden color. It looks great in the picture of the sword. It doesn't translate well into burning with the laser because the laser is going to make it brown, in this case a light brown, and I wanted it a darker brown. I ended up doing some painting on my version of this sword and using some silver spray paint. I painted both sides with a light coat. I didn't want to cover it too much because I wanted the wood grain and the, the scroll work to come through. Then on the other, on one side, I also painted a light blue coating on there. If you've watched the movies, we, we found out that when orcs are nearby, the sword will glow blue. And I painted one side with a light blue cast on it, the other side I didn't. So depending on how you hold it will determine whether orcs are nearby. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of how to do the work in Lightburn for a project such as this. Maybe learn something new like the offset fill. That's a feature that I just learned about recently and thought it was fantastic. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content of our channel, think about subscribing. As always, enjoy doing your CNC at home projects. Oops.